today we are going to study the fossils belonging to kingdom animalia phylum arthropoda and class trilobita to understand the meaning of arthropoda it is split into two Greek terms, arthron means joint, poda means foot. To understand the meaning of arthropod, split it into two words, basically Greek terms, arthron means joint, poda means foot. So the animal bears jointed foot or appendages all insects are classified under this however animals belonging to class trilobites are now extinct they lived in the age early age of cambrian beginning of cambrian they were supposed to be the first animals in the fossil form that have appeared we can refer it to the animals by studying the fossils they were ruling in early cambrian period to understand the meaning of trilobite tri means three and loba means parts that means the body is divided into three parts that is anterior part head middle part thorax and posterior part called pygidium or alternative word to that is tail but tail is the term used to describe the advanced part of the body that is evolved part of the body so these animals were primitive and thus the term tail cannot be used so the word pygidium is used which is the posterior most part of the body the first appearance of these trilobites were in early cambrian that is 521 million years ago and they flourished throughout the lower paleozoic time and we come extinct uh, during uh, devonian uh, period so they lived from early cambrian up to the devonian so you know the devonian was the time when fish appeared dominantly on the earth so some part of devonian time they lived as uh, during the permian uh, there was huge mass extinction due to changing climatic conditions and uh, these trilobites were not exception to that so in permian uh, they completely become extinct as a part of mass extinction process looking at their uh, distribution geographic distribution we can say that uh, they were most successful animals distributed all over the ocean floor mainly their uh, natural habitat that is ocean water and they were spread all over so they flourished in total time of their 300 million years all over the ocean floor so this way we can say that they are they were successful animals so we gets the fossil records of as if a ready madely evolved uh, animals of trilobites so that's why we call it as they have appeared suddenly so there is gap of availability of fossil records uh, of the animals which were existing earlier to the fossils we get so whatever uh, fossils you are seeing on the screen their ancestral uh, fossils uh, 
records are not there so that is called as evolutionary gap of records so we don't have any records of that their previous uh, uh, forms one of the uh, cause attributed to this is uh, a climatic change which was comfortable that uh, ocean waters were becoming warm a uh, kind of uh, uh, comfortable and suitable habitat for the growth of the animals and uh, uh, we can say that the trilobites took chance to emerge suddenly and uh, flourish all over the ocean floor so this is kind of a, a generalized expression we can say that how they appear suddenly uh, as if as if we can see it in the records of its their fossils so let's say that uh, suitable environmental conditions for the growth was the reason they uh, suddenly flourished uh, but if you see there they are also having diverse diversified forms you can see at the left hand side that fossil is different the one at the center is different right hand side is different so they had different diversified varieties also okay so they must have evolved from their different ancestral uh, forms you can see one thing is common as i have said is that uh, they are uh, classed under uh, trilobite that all three uh, you are seeing on the screen is having uh, three parts of it, their body that is uh, head then central part thorax and posterior part Pigitium. That is here. You can see here to the left hand side. This is part of head, upper part that is towards anterior side. Below that is this part is thorax, central part, and this posterior uh, small triangular part is pigitium. This animal is very small. Name is trinucleus. However, if you see the body size of paradoxides. This is the paradoxides. Uh, it is larger in size, and you can see uh, detailing as I have as I have told you that it is having upper anterior part that is head, first part of the body. This part to this part is thorax, and from this to posterior side this is pygidium. You can say it is as a primary tail. So this fossil is of uh, calamine. Uh, as it is fossilized form, we don't have a head part, upper anterior part of this animal is cut. So above this is this was head. Head part is cut. It was uh, there probably, but uh, while recovering the fossil from the field, this uh, specimen was cut. But you can see it here uh, very well. So head is having again other details. Head is again divided into three parts. That is central part, which is on the line of body axis. This is body axis, which divides the animal into two equal parts. That is bilateral symmetry. So this is bilaterally symmetrical animal. So near the axis or body axis or symmetry axis, we have this central part of head, and to that we have lateral parts. So head is also divided into central part and two lateral parts. That is three parts. Okay. So central part of the head is called as glabella. This is uh, convex. You can see a convex curved. shield of head below which the brain is present and this up convex or convex shield is called as glabella placed at the axis of body and lateral to r lateral to the glabella r called as cheeks these are called cheeks this is one cheek at the left hand side another cheek at the right hand side so these are the cheeks so head is consisting of one centrally located convex glabella and laterally placed cheeks two cheeks so these are the three parts 
left hand cheek glabella right hand side cheek okay the line of junction between glabella that is this part and cheek this is called as suture okay so that that continues into uh, cheeks so it runs from anterior part to posterior part up to this this line up junction between thorax and head so this is called as suture okay and of the suture is there here you can see running between glabella and cheek this is called facial suture facial suture facial suture cheeks are of two types one near to the glabella is fixed non movable hence it is called as fixed cheek and there is another cheek here you can see here it's just a little bit difference in the texture this is fixed cheek this is free cheek so fixed cheek and free cheek are the two types of cheeks right so this is anterior curved part of head to its lateral the head towards posterior shows one tail like or prolonged projection of the same head here runs at the both the both sides left hand side and right hand side this is called as genial spine okay genial spine so posterior projection of head which is pointed and tail like is called genial spine so these are the three parts of head glabella centrally located glabella centrally located glabella two cheeks cheeks are of two type fixed cheek non movable and free cheek which is movable line of separation a facial suture paradox paradox it is it is this details are well seen so this is first part of the body that is head this is head the line of divide you can see here is the limit of posterior end of the head then from this line starts the thorax up to this part you can see here this line so this is thorax this to this is thorax and from this you can see here is the pygidium So that's why it is called as trilobite. Body is divided into three parts: head, thorax, pygidium. Okay. Now the line of separation between head and thorax is the line of separation. It is called as occipital furrow. occipital furrow is the line of junction between thorax and head this is occipital furrow so if you look at the thorax it is also segmented you can see so many segments here the thorax is also segmented like head central part and then lateral two parts these are these are called as lobes the one the lobes which are present near the axis are called as axial lobes and to the axial lobes we have another lobes at both the sides those are called as pleural lobes so these are the pleural lobes and these are axial lobes so thorax is divided into three parts that is axial lobes centrally located near the body axis and to its lateral there are two 
pleural lobes. So below this line is the PGM. PGDM is also having segmented parts. This is also segmented like this. So here are the central part and these are the lateral parts. Sometimes PGDM its posterior end will be more prolonged like tail but we cannot call it as a tail it is called as tail sun so posterior most part of the pygidium which is prolonged like the tail like this then it is called as tail sun so this is paradoxides this is trinucleus same like paradoxides, uh, the body is divided into three parts that is, this is head, below that is thorax and this is pygidium. So this is small size animal, this was small size animal, the distinct uh, head features you can see here. So anterior margin of head is here and posterior body and seat here. Okay. So head starts with a curved anterior end. From head to glabella, the area is larger. You can see here anterior margin to glabella, head in paradoxides. This is anterior last margin to glabella, anterior margin of glabella. This is smaller size area. But in this, but in this trinucleus, we have larger area between anterior end margin to the starting point of glabella. So this is larger area, and you can see it is little bit textured you see this is textured and this is called as crown it as it appears as if that this animal is wearing a crown here with some ornamentation dotted or ornamentation this is called as crown of trinucleus and then we have here prominent uh, central part that is head with the glabella highly curved Convex glabella placed at the near to the body axis, and there are laterally placed cheeks. Though we cannot identify uh, pre cheek and fixed cheek here, but uh, you can see distinctly the cheeks. Two cheeks are placed at the lateral positions to centrally located glabella. Okay. This is facial suture. Now after the head we have here thorax this much part is thorax thorax and head are separated by occipital furrow this is the groove which is occipital furrow some part of head before we go to thorax we will we'll see that some part of head towards posterior forms long genial spines you see extension of head towards posterior in the form of uh, general spines so below the occipital furrow we have here thorax number of segments are less but it is having identical centrally placed axial lobes and laterally placed pleural lobes you can see size of the pleural lobes is larger it covers larger surface area larger surface as compared to the axial lobes so lobes are segmented these are also segmented you can see here segment 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 and this axial lobe placed towards the body axis at the at the body axis and lateral to the axial lobe we have pleural lobes okay and this is pgdm pgdm also may have prolonged tail like projection called as telson 
this is calamine as i have told you earlier that uh, the head part of the calamine is not seen in in this fossil but uh, you can see this is occipital furrow this is some part of occipital furrow is uh, seen preserved here but upper part of head is removed because this specimen is cut towards the anterior side so this is occipital furrow what are best we can see is the thorax part and this large pygidium can you see so this is thorax part up to this margin and below that is pygidium this is pygidium fan like pygidium so this is these are axial lobes present at the body axis this is body axis okay body axis these are axial lobes and these are pleural lobes you could see that pleural lobes at its lateral most ends they are split into two one and two okay split into two so this is thorax of calamine so from this line below you can see sudden change in the texture this is this pleural lobes are larger in size can you see more prominent here more elevated more larger axial lobes are also larger but suddenly from this line below you can see small sized lobes small sized lobes here small sized lobes so the pygidium is very large contains numerous segments if you try to count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 more than 13 segments are there in pygidium okay 13 segments of uh, pleural lobes same will be the count of uh, axial lobes because uh, they are uh, originated from this only okay so this is uh, central part of pygidium these are the pleural sides of the pygidium here you can see a body line axis parallel to that are the junctions of line up junction of axial lobe and pleural lobes this is line up junction okay in another side it is here these are the two uh lines which runs parallel to the axial lobe uh which is uh, centrally located or we can also say that they runs parallel to the body axis they can also be called as axial furrows because they are parallel to the body axis so this is calamine this is paradoxides to your left hand side and this is trinucleus to the right hand side what is the common identical characteristics that is body is divided into three parts head thorax and pygidium head is missing here in calamine this is thorax part and large size pygidium proportionate to its thorax size here this is head small thorax part and small pygidium you can see the textural difference of thorax lobes and then pygidium lobes you can identify pygidium separately clearly so head thorax pygidium what is speciality of trinucleus a crowned head more convex glabella prominent cheeks at the lateral sides what is speciality of paradoxides large glabella okay large length of thorax large overall body size okay what is common another thing between this trinucleus and paradoxides this one 
projection proje posterior projection of the head that is what is this called as general spine here it is here this and this here it is here this and this rather in trinucleus it exceeds the total length of the body from crown to pygidium so it is going still further down it is more than the length of the body this however in paradoxides it is running up to some distance reaching up to the mid part of thorax can you see this is running up to this part only up to the middle part of the thorax still some part of thorax remains down and then start the pygidium so length of this general spine is not long as compared to the proportionate body size of general spine of trinucleus so this is about trinucleus calamine and paradoxides this is paradoxides this calamine and this is trinucleus Trinucleus.